In this example, we have three poles and zeros. We have an excess of three poles. N is three and M is zero, no zeros. This gives us an excess of three poles that we'll have to go to infinity. The poles are zero, negative one, and negative two. These poles will go to infinity following asymptotes that we can determine using the same formula again, 180 minus 360 times Q minus 1 divided by N minus M. Theta 1, the angle of the first asymptote, is obtained by setting Q to 1, which is 180 minus 360 times 0 divided by 3, that is 60 degrees. Theta 2 is obtained by setting Q to 2, and this is, when Q is 2 here, we get 180 degrees. And theta 3 takes Q equals to 3, and this is 300 degrees, or negative 60 degrees. These are the angle of all asymptotes. The centroid of the asymptotes is obtained as the sum of poles minus the sum of zeros divided by n minus m. Sum of poles, we have negative 2, negative 1, plus 0, this is for sum of p, minus the sum of zeros, that's 0, divided by 3. And this is equal to negative 1. Now let's determine the segments of the real axis that have a root locus. As we start counting from positive infinity, the count here is 0. The count now between these two poles is 1. We just encountered one pole. Past this negative 1, now the count becomes 2. And past negative 2, the count becomes 3. The odd segments are this one and this one. So the root locus exists between these two poles and to the left of the pole at a negative 2. If the root locus exists to the left of negative 2, we can easily complete the root locus on this portion of the S-plane. We know that this pole goes to negative infinity following the asymptote of 180 degrees. Here is the asymptote we determined. And again, because this segment is part of the root locus, then this pole needs to go to negative infinity following that asymptote. There is no other possible solution. Now the root locus also exists between these two poles, so they need to come together and break away from the real axis, become complex conjugates, and then tend to infinity. The location of the asymptotes that we have is negative one, is at negative one, so it is right on the pole here. And the two asymptotes that will take this pole to infinity are negative sixty and plus sixty. That's the only possible solution. It could not be negative one hundred and eighty degrees because then we have to occupy this portion of the real axis, and according to our count here, there shouldn't exist any root locus there. So one of the poles goes to positive, one of the poles goes to infinity following this asymptote, the other one goes to infinity following a negative 60 degree asymptote. So these poles now will come together, will break away, One goes up, the other one goes downwards. As k tends to zero from zero to infinity. And we see again that at this point here, this is the point where they break away from the real axis and become complex conjugate numbers. Past that point, the system that was overdamped becomes now underdamped because the poles are complex conjugates. They're now going to plus minus infinity. But, but they are crossing the imaginary axis at these two points. Past that point, the system now becomes unstable. Originally underdamped, critically damped at this point, underdamped, and now unstable. The value of k at this point here is 0, so it's here, k equals to 0. At this point here, let's assume that the value of k there is k1. We don't know where k1 is, that's something that we're going to calculate in the following lecture. But let's assume that when the system is now 
Critically damped, the value of k is k1. And when the poles are crossing the imaginary axis, let's call this gain k2. And here we have k2. We can say now that when k is smaller than k1, the system is overdamped. Is k is smaller than k1 means that we are within this region, and all poles are real numbers, and that's what characterizes a overdamped system. When k equals to k1, we are right at this point here, and this characterizes a critically damped system. When now k exceeds k1, so k is greater than k1, but it's smaller than k2, the system is underdamped. Because now all poles are located on this part of the root locus, and this part of the root locus has complex conjugate numbers as poles that represents an underdamped system. When k equals to k2, we are here and here. This characterizes a marginally stable system. Because now the poles are purely imaginary numbers. And when k is greater than k2, the system is unstable. Because now these poles have a positive real part. What happened to this guy here? Well, as this guy, as we keep increasing k, this pole tends to negative infinity, and will, its real part becomes larger, and will decay very fast. So clearly, the poles, the complex poles that you have here, will dominate the response because they take longer to decay. And this pole, as it's going to negative infinity, will have a minimal effect in the time response. But now I have to be also careful. We went from something that was overdamped to underdamped, marginally stable, and if decay is high enough we can even make the system unstable.